This episode is brought to you by the Solo to Group Practice Webinar. It's a free webinar that you can find at practiceoftherapy.com slash group. And also brought to you by Therapy Notes, therapynotes.com. This is the Practice of Therapy podcast with Gordon Brewer, helping you to navigate your private practice journey. This is session number 182 of the Practice of Therapy podcast. Hello, folks. I'm Gordon Brewer. Hope you're having a good week or weekend whenever you might be listening to this. Um, so, I, uh, you know, here we are full force into summer time. And um, I know that it is really feeling like it in East Tennessee. I don't remember when it's been so muggy, but it's uh, welcome to the South. So anyway, I digress. I'm, I'm looking forward um, to you hearing from my guest today, Dr. Manoj. And uh, he is a person that I've met um, through some collaboration with uh, an organization called Grow Therapy. And one of the things that they do is they enable, in certain states, enable therapists to get their credentialing through them. And they they handle all the all the filing of claims and all of that sort of thing. So it's a really interesting concept for those of us that might be interested in being on insurance panels. And so I'm looking for you, look, looking forward to you rather hearing my conversation with him and him just explaining the concept. It's really an intriguing concept in that it's a, a way for people to be on insurance panels without having to go through all the headache. Um, and um, I'm going to let him explain it better than I can. But uh, one, one of the things I will say is, is that uh, being on insurance panels Panels is um, sometimes a tough decision for people, and uh, the main drawback that a lot of us have, although I'm on insurance panels, is um, just the paperwork involved and all the hoops you have to jump through. Uh, but I think as much as anything, the demographics of your area will determine kind of your decision on that just uh, and uh, being able to get clients. Because, uh, again, uh, being on insurance panels is one quick way to get um, a lot of clients. So anyway, I'm looking forward to you hearing from uh, hearing that conversation. Um one of the things that happened uh, this past week is I held a webinar and it was uh, using Google Workspace in your private practice was the webinar. And you can still get to that, get to see the recording. I've already held the live webinar, but you can go to practiceoftherapy.com slash GWS webinar and um, you can still get the replay if you haven't done so already. If you've already registered for the webinar, you should uh, check your inbox. You should get the uh, replay of that along with some uh, information about the bonuses and discounts that I offered in the webinar around the Google Workspace for Therapists course. And if you're interested in finding more out about the course itself, you can go to practiceoftherapy.com slash GWS course. And that'll that's the direct link to the to the teachable page where the horse, where the course lives. So I uh, invite you to go over and check that out. So um, the other thing before we get to Dr. Manoj is um, be sure and check out our sponsor for the podcast. And that is therapy notes, therapy notes, Dot com. They are the leading electronic health record system for private practices and private practice owners. Um, they're who I use in my practice, and they are really a wonderful platform. Uh, they have a patient portal that is second to none, and also they patients can go in and schedule themselves for your practice if you set it up that way. 
They also have a telehealth portal there uh, so that you can do it all in one place. Uh, they It will file insurance claims for you, all of that, and it just adds to the automation and productivity for you in your practice. So be sure and check them out, therapynotes.com, and be sure and use the promo code GORDON, just G-O-R-D-O-N, and you can try them out for two months without any cost to you. You can try them out two months for free. So it's a pretty good deal to check it out, therapynotes.com. And so um, without further ado, here is my conversation with Dr. Manoj from Grow Therapy. Well, hello, everyone, and welcome again to the podcast. And I'm so happy uh, to have with me today Manoj he is the person behind Grow Therapy, and I want you to hear about this service. I uh, had uh, a conversation with one of his colleagues uh, about a week or two ago, and um, just really excited about this uh, new resource for therapists. And so, Manoj, welcome, and glad you're with me. Thank you, Gordon. Very excited to be here. Yes. And so as I start with everyone, why don't you tell folks a little bit about your story and how you've landed where you've landed and we'll take it from there. That sounds great. Um, So yeah, a little bit of background on me and my story. I uh, grew up around a lot of mental health professionals and um, myself, I was in medical training and I, you know, over the past decade or so, I'd found mental health to be something that uh, I really cared about and found, uh, as I think most listeners on this podcast would know, something that over the past several years, there's been a lot more public conversation about, but in the past there wasn't, and there was a lot of stigma around mental health and sort of seeking out care. And it's been really nice to see that stigma start to reduce, um, but as that's happened, a lot of folks have been seeking out therapy or seeking out uh, mental health services, and really struggling to to find them in a way that sort of fits their their needs, particularly financially. Um, so from one end, what I sort of was witnessing was a lot of friends and family were having difficulty finding affordable mental health care, uh, particularly that based on their insurance. And then on the other end, from sort of my personal career path and medical training, it sort of seemed that for healthcare professionals, particularly mental health professionals, uh, the landscape of running a practice uh, was not very, it was no longer as, you know, as simple as it might have been uh, a couple decades ago. There were increasing complexities of just running a small business, but then especially plugging into the sort of insurance payment landscape. And it's been that way for a while. And I think a lot of folks would probably agree that it's it's not it's not that fun to have to figure out how to get on an insurance panel, wait several months to do that, and then once you're in, get reimbursed at a rate that doesn't really sort of fairly value your services that you're offering, mm-hmm. and then have to do a bunch of paperwork to sort of get those claims in and then follow through and get paid. So the private practice experience as well just seemed like it was. Uh, really overwhelming for someone who wanted to run their own practice and was leading to a lot of uh, clinician and professional burnout. And from that end, uh, I really had always wanted to see a way where uh, healthcare professionals could uh, sort of find that middle balance again, where you have Mm -hmm. the autonomy of getting to practice on your own terms without feeling like you need a hospital system or a large, you know, like, local group practice to have to take care of all the back office for you, but mm-hmm. also take away half of your earnings, um, which was kind of the, the place where we saw a lot of folks um, stuck in where they were getting that support, but they were earning 50 cents on the dollar um, at, as a cost for that. So right, those two problems were really uh, sort of apparent to me and, and were pretty influential to starting our journey on growth therapy. Yes, yes. And I was so excited to hear about it because it, you you described it perfectly for a lot of folks in private practice in that um, 
I know for me, I'm an insurance based practice. And part of my decision to do that was for the very reasons you mentioned early on is being able to provide something that's affordable to people. um, But at the same time, to be able to pay my clinicians a fair wage. uh, But um, also the demographics of our area, we are a small, small metro, you know, it's kind of a, a small metropolitan area surrounded by a large rural area. And the people that come to us are very dependent on their insurance and need, need to use their insurance to pay for services. And so n- navigating all of that, you're right. It's, it's a nightmare. So, um, yeah, I'm so so glad that you kind of taking this on. So um, one of the things uh, that I think folks might be interested in is that is just kind of how you're structured and how you're different with the way that you do things within grow therapy. What we saw as options for folks um, for mental health professionals were, I guess, I'd break it down into a few categories. One would be to you know work for a large health system um, as a as a mental health counselor, a social worker, psychologist, psychiatrist. Uh, another was to work for a, a local group practice. And I think that was uh, that's been a, a very popular option. And I think mm-hmm. con- will continue to be to be the case because it's really nice to have a small group of peers that you can sort of learn from, especially, you know, at a certain stage of your career than to just jump out all on your own. Um, the other is, uh, you know, for folks who did feel like they wanted to do their own practice, there are tools like simple practice or therapy notes that were kind of, you know, do it yourself software where you could log your notes, maybe submit a claim, but you just have so much of the work still on your plate, um, to run that business. And then the, the final one was for people who kind of wanted to plug into the the telemental health wave over the past couple of years, and especially over COVID with, uh, with telehealth companies like uh, BetterHelp or Teladoc. And so that was kind of our, like our assessment of, of the landscape. And I think just starting from back to, to first with the telehealth companies, it really felt like those businesses were more focused on the client and not really on the practitioner. And it came at a cost of uh, a lot of uh, mental health professionals feeling like they were just being plugged into a system uh, with uh, even continuity of care being disrupted, where some clients would see someone for a short period of time and then have to be switched to someone else without really much control over that process. Mm -hmm. Uh, The tools like simple practice and therapy notes, they're great software, um, but they they leave a lot of the practice still in uh, an individual's hand of sort of getting up and running a lot of the marketing work, um, getting the actual referrals and then having to follow up to actually get paid by insurance companies or even with self pay, there's, there's some work there. Um, And then we already talked a little bit about the group practice, the pros there. I think um, some of the challenges before were that with, um, with office leases, it was, there was obviously a lot of cost to having to run a local group practice. And uh, for some participating clinicians that came at a cost to them in terms mm-hmm. of earnings. Um, and then the sort of larger health systems, I'd say uh, it's fairly clear that the, the sense of clinical autonomy is, is limited there uh, versus in a private practice. So mm-hmm. what we really wanted to do was to um, not be so front facing towards, I guess, clients and sort of branding the experience, um, but also giving uh, everyone who works with us the the support on the back end. So they feel like they don't have to worry about um, getting paid by insurance companies or having some base source of referrals. So what we've built with growth therapy is, I guess you can think of it as a, a sort of an infrastructure or a back end for somebody who wants their own private practice to get more support or for someone who hasn't even started a private practice before. And a lot of folks come to us and they basically have gotten into the stage in their career where they want to take that next step and they find Mm -hmm. us a really good partner to sort of take that leap. So we, we really strive to, to offer folks that balance of the clinical autonomy, the marketing and brand 
independence. Um, but all of the, the team, uh, that's there for you in your corner, um, without it feeling like an isolating experience. Right. Right. Yeah. It's a, yeah, it's a, I think it's one of the things that I think is a, a, appealing to people is, is that, um, they're not having to do a uh, deal with as many of the, all the different pieces that have to go on behind the scenes. And I think the other thing too, that makes you unique is that you do, um, help people with, uh, being able to collect from insurance companies. You want to say more about that? Yeah, absolutely. So effectively, after a visit with with our platform, um, anybody could just, uh, you know, just go in and, and on our software, just say, or on our website, just say, you know, what the length of that visit was and what the nature of that visit was from a clinical perspective. If you have somewhere you take notes, you can keep it on that platform. If you want to add your note into our system, that's great too, as long as there's something somewhere. Uh, and then from there, we uh, offer an, an estimated time of when somebody can expect it to get paid and how much that would be based on the contract that we have with the insurance company um, that everyone plugs into. And, uh, and from there, that, that, that's about it. Uh, then our team sort of takes over submits the actual claim, does uh, all of the follow-up to make sure that the claim was uh, cleared, and then uh, checks in with the insurance company to make sure it gets remitted, and then it goes straight to, to all of our participating practitioners' accounts. Wow. Yeah. So, so it's basically, um, when just thinking about the model of business there, the structure people work as contractors for grow therapy. Is that correct? correct? Okay. That's the technical, the technical relationship. Exactly. Right. Right. So, yeah. So let me see if I've got this correct and just to help clarify for not only me, but maybe, maybe some of the listeners, it would be just like if they had gone to work for a group practice where the group practice was credentialed with different insurance companies and then they contract you, you provide the services, and then the insurance company pays to, to grow therapy, and then you distribute the, the proportion that the, that the contractor gets back, back to them. Yep, exactly. That's a, okay. a structure. Oh, that's great. That's great. So what, what states are you in so far? Um, is because I know it varies from state to state. Yep. Um, what the, the different insurances? That's a great question. So we started out in Florida and we built a, a pretty large community there of uh, close to 350 mental health professionals now. And we have a nice thriving uh, supportive online community where folks, uh, you know, get advice from each other on clients or um, have peer support groups uh, or share referrals amongst each other, which is growing really nicely. And We've been excited to to see that um, over the past year, and so now we're we're really thrilled to uh, share that we're now moving into a handful of other states. Um, and we've been launching in Georgia, uh, the D.C., uh, Virginia, Maryland metro area, and Pennsylvania. And um, that's been some news just over the past month or so. And mm-hmm. we're actually excited to start moving into even more states after that. So. It's, oh. been, uh, it's been a lot of work uh, being in touch with the different insurance companies to help expand this platform and this mission into other states. But we're excited to share that, uh, that we've won over uh, a handful of them in terms of alignment to make things right. easy for, for everyone to plug in. Right. And I know another, another b- big benefit of GROW is um, the community that you have um, in connection with it in terms of being able to have conversations with other, other therapists around clinical issues and that sort of thing. You want to say more about that as far as how that works? Yeah, absolutely. So anybody who joins um, grow therapy to sort of either build out or, or help grow their practice gets invited to our online community and there. um, it's, it's pretty great. I mean, you, you basically have the chance to meet hundreds of other folks who have 
kind of taken the same leap or have been on this journey uh, similar to what you're embarking on to get to know each other, introduce yourself to them. Um, you can have, you know, one-on-one -on -one chats to learn in terms of, you know, I saw your website. I really like the way you were marketing yourself. Can you give me tips on how to build a similar website? Or I just got some referrals for someone on Blue Cross. I'm not accepting Blue Cross yet. Would somebody here like to help this person out? They have these specific preferences. Mm -hmm. um, and it's also been really nice to see leaders sort of just grow and autonomously um, take positions within the community of uh, starting peer support groups around certain topics. And uh, I don't know, it's just, I think it's, it's always a joy to work with, uh, with, with mental health professionals because they're just some of the best people. <laughs> and, uh, That's true. Yeah, yeah, I would agree. Yeah. Yeah. And so the uh -huh. community, it's just kind of, flourish on its own and it's uh it's it's been really nice to just see everyone get to connect with each other right right yeah so what it what is uh what is the process for somebody that's interested in finding out more you know the sign up process and credentialing process and all of that for you guys yeah so it's a pretty easy process um obviously the important thing is whether we're if whether you're licensed in the states we currently are active in, but um, that should be expanding uh, pretty soon here. Um, but the, the real first step is just to go on our website, um, head over to our providers page, and then just enter in some basic info on yourself. And then um, someone on our team would schedule a, a, an interview or a, a sort of consult and just get online and get to know each other and see um, both from that technical perspective, but just from, you know, from a, an individual's like sort of position along their journeys perspective, if that makes sense, whether mm -hmm. there's a good mutual fit. We, uh, we definitely want to help sort of guide and navigate folks to make sure that growth therapy is a good fit for them because it's, it's not for everybody, but it is for the folks who are ready to either take that leap into private practice or are already there. So it's, it's really just that first call with someone on our team. And then um, after that, we kick off the, the credentialing process. Right, right. I think it would be just a great opportunity for folks that are, as you kind of alluded to, those folks that might be working for like an agency or maybe a larger organization, but they're thinking about moving into private practice mm. to be able to use this as kind of a bridge for that um, in that they can maybe start a private practice part time or something yep. like that. And then this would be, this would take a lot of the, the administrative stuff um, off the plate for them in the background. You know? Yeah, you're totally right. And we've seen a lot of people do exactly that, where let's say you work for an agency for, you know, 30, 35 hours a week, maybe 40. And then you have some extra hours um, throughout the week where you could fit in some sessions, let's say from 5 to 7 p.m., or let's say you have Fridays off and you want to just open up a practice in a really sort of easy way to, to get a feel for it. And then we've also seen folks who have done that sort of fill up their practice and then start to say, hey, I need to open up more time. And it's fully in their court to set their schedule. And we, we have mm -hmm. nothing to say about that. So um, as you sort of, get your legs under you, you can sort of start expanding and allocating more time to your private practice. So it's a, it's a great bridge um, for folks who are just uh, exactly in that category, as well as right. those who uh, are already going. Right, right. Yeah, I love that. Um, the, the other thing, I, you know, one question that comes to mind for me, uh, that some people might be curious about and I know it varies from state to state and also insurance company to insurance company. But if somebody's maybe has an associate license or some places they're called temporary licenses where they're kind of in that that place from they've graduated, they have their degree and they're working towards licensure. Are you finding that there are some insurance companies that are are working with those folks that are under supervision, that sort of thing? That's a great question. Um, you're totally right. It varies from insurance company to insurance company. So 
it'd be a little tough for me to to sort of uh, make a, a broad sweeping statement there. Uh, a number of companies that we work with do, uh, they do require upfront for credentialing there to be, you know, a, a license um, already in place. Um, so I guess it, it, it does vary. And I think as we're expanding to new states, we might see some different permutations of that. But the ones that we'd previously been working with, it seemed like they had a relatively hard line on that. Right. Are, are there any... Um... This this might be putting you on the spot, but are you finding that there are any or any states uh, that it's a little bit easier process than other states? Um, I you know I think it it really it even within the state it varies based on mm-hmm. the, the region because the way the insurance companies think is based on their network and so they break down the country state to state, but then they also break down the country, the, the state into, you know, the different regions and, and zip codes, if you will. Mm-hmm. So depending on what their needs are for those different areas, they uh, can make it easier or harder for people to join the network. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of the insurance companies are really struggling with over the past year, though, is, okay, we've seen that uh, mental and behavioral health has made a really nice transition to, to tele-based care. And that sort of dissolves their prior framework where they were so focused on uh, local regions. And mm-hmm. I'm witnessing it now. They're, they're actively having to think about how do we adapt to a future that doesn't have such, um, such local ties for, for mental health. Or, I mean, in terms of what's possible. Right. And so I think they're having to rethink that. And we've seen that with a couple of companies. So it, yeah. I think the landscape's changing quickly. Yeah, I, I would uh, I would agree. I think one of the things that we learned just through COVID is is that we, particularly with telehealth, is that it 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 broadens our, um, really opens up the potential for our clients yep. because you cannot you not only have your local region that you service, but you could uh, potentially service a whole state. Right, and so uh, being able to think about that kind of marketing I had, uh, we recently did uh, redid our website around the first of the year, Mm -hmm. uh, just did a complete overhaul. And uh, the person I was working with, Daniel Fava, uh, I told him, I said, you know, we've got to think about our SEO on a state level rather than uh, just a local level at, at this point. So Again, it's a, and, and I know well, with, uh, I'm sure that's something that's on your radar as well as just SEO and making sure that people's names come up in, in Google searches and that kind of thing when they're searching for therapists. Yeah, absolutely. Because even though we don't, you know, take the brand for any of our providers, um, they keep their own brand. We do like to help give them referrals. And that's something that they really appreciate from us. So that's important for us to, to think about and optimize for them. Um, yeah, that's great. Well, Manoj, I, I think uh, there's probably just lots more we could talk about, but I want to be <laughs> respectful of your time. Tell folks uh, how they can get in touch with you and uh, the web, where the website, the website and all that. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, you could just go to growtherapy.com slash providers. And uh, that's G-R-O-W therapy.com slash providers. And that'll give you everything you need to, to get in touch with us. And we look forward to hearing from everybody. <laughs> that's great. That's great. And we'll have, of course, links in, uh, in the show notes and the show summary for everyone. Well, um, I'm sure people will be hearing more from you, Manoj, and, and we'll, um, uh, I'm looking forward to um, hopefully doing this again. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed my conversation with Dr. Manoj. Um, you know, um, one of the things um, in just doing a lot of the collaboration I do with different different organizations and different businesses is I get to meet some really cool people. And one of the things that I'm looking forward to is um, 
Grow Therapy has asked me to uh, lead one of their community AMAs, Ask Me Anything um, sessions, and that's going to be coming up in uh, in a few weeks, and I'm looking forward to that. I probably ought to do a podcast on what I talk about, and that is just about having a podcast. Um, they had asked me to come and talk to their community about um, – how to start a podcast and how to, why you would want one for your practice. So, uh, just, just thinking back on my conversation with Dr. Manoj is just being, um, being able to network in those ways. And I think that's one of the things that is pretty cool about their platform is that they not only provide a service of being able to file insurance claims for you, but also, um, created a community to build businesses so um, be sure and check them out growtherapy.com slash uh, providers um, and you can find out more about them they're um, I lo- really love the as I said at the beginning love this concept and also just love the fact that they're creating out-of-the-box ways of thinking about running a private practice and I think um, might be a good fit for some people. So anyway, be sure and check them out. And also be sure if you haven't done so already, register for the uh, using Google Workspace um, for private practice webinar and it'll be available until June the 20th. So you just got as this episode's coming out just a just about a week left before that uh, before that webinar will no longer be available. So be sure and take advantage of that. And you can get to that by going to practiceoftherapy.com slash GWS webinar. And um, I enjoyed doing it. We had, we've had well over, well over 200 people register for it so far. And we had a great showing at the live webinar, but what you would get now is the replay of that. And so you can watch it at your leisure as long as it's available. It's only, like I said, it's only going to be available till uh, June 20th. So take advantage of that. And as always, the big thanks to therapy notes, therapy notes.com for sponsoring the podcast. They are the leading electronic health record system for mental health providers in private practice. Um, they are who I use in my practice and really love the platform they've created and and the tools that it provides. And also, uh, speaking of tools and um, things, they also have support that is second to none. Uh, when you call them up to get a question answered, they respond to you immediately and um, have just tons of tools and blog posts and information about running a practice um, on the back end as well. So be sure and check them out, therapynotes.com, and use the coupon code, or the promo code rather, Gordon, just G-O-R-D-O-N, to get two months free of their services. So thanks, folks, again, for joining me for this particular episode. I'm really excited about some upcoming episodes. I've got uh, interviewed some people earlier this week, and it was just uh, looking and excited for you to hear from them and my conversations with them just around these different topics. And, you know, as a, as a side note here, if there's a particular topic that you would like uh, to hear more about uh, just in this private practice space, uh, give me a shout out. Just email me at Gordon at uh, Gordon at practiceoftherapy.com and give me your suggestions because I'd love to hear from you or if you uh, feel like you've got a topic that our listeners would be interested in uh, you can um, you can apply to be on on the podcast I, I get a ton of requests not everyone makes it onto the podcast but if I feel like it's relevant and um, uh, relevant to our niche I will certainly um, get, send you an invitation to be on the podcast and you can just go to the website practice of com, and you'll see links there um, for the podcast and if you'll scroll down on that page you'll see the application be a podcast guest and you just fill out that google form and uh, it will notify me and I'll look at it and see what you have to offer um, but anyway 
um, hope that too, if you're, even if you're just enjoying listening, I hope that you'll be sure and take time to subscribe to the podcast and also leave us a review and a rating that only helps for other people being able to find us. Our, this podcast is just growing immensely over this last year. And, um, you know, we're, you know, for some, it might be a small number, but for me, it's pretty huge as getting over 5,000 downloads a month of the podcast. So thank you all for listening in. That's a lot of listeners. So, but thank you for being with me on this journey. Take care, folks, and we'll talk to you next week. been listening to the practice of therapy podcast with gordon brewer please visit us at practiceoftherapy.com for more information resources and tools to help you in starting building and growing your private practice and if you haven't done so already please sign up to receive the free private practice startup guide at practiceoftherapy.com The information in this podcast is intended to be accurate and authoritative concerning the subject matter covered. It is given with the understanding that neither the hosts, guests, or producers are rendering legal, accounting, or clinical advice. If you need a professional, you should find the right person for that.